hopefully we are following along now. Are you ready, Denny? Got to clear your throat first. <laughs> All right. Class. Thank you. All right. So we're going to go through and, like I was saying, we have to change up the notes because these notes need examples. It needs a lot of examples. This is probably one of the ones that a lot of people have trouble with, but this is the one that's actually a lot of people actually will use. Outside of this, this is where where if you go into finance, you go into a business degree, you go into any type of research that you need for your college, you're gonna need this math here. Okay, optimization. Okay, so now let's let's think about this real quick. Okay, now picture in your head, picture your head a problem. And in that parabola, it's upside down. Just think about it. Picture it, okay? It's a parabola. It's upside down. Okay. So at the very top of this parabola would be a maximum, right? It's going to be a maximum there. But what do we know about the very top of that parabola? What do I know? The slope, is zero. the slope is zero. So I know that when I'm optimizing in doing this, it's either going to be a minimum or maximum to optimize something. Is when I'm thinking about that, I'm going to end up having to have profits or some other thing where right there at the top is when my slope is equal to zero. So all optimization has to be where my derivative is going to be equal to zero. That's basically all of this. We just need to set up our formulas. So it can be our derivative is equal to zero. So a lot of them, we have to make our own formula. All right, step four, solving optimization problem. Read the problem until you understand it and can identify the quantity for which maximum and minimum value is being found. Assign a symbol to represent. Assign symbol represents uh, the other variables of the problem. Draw a picture, label it, determine a relationship among the variables, express quantity, maximize the minimum function of the variables, determine meaningful domain for the function, find absolute maximum value or absolute minimum value for the function. Now, as you're picturing that parabola that we started with, okay, we started with an x squared. It was a negative x squared because it turned it upside down then I have the math going right there. So being able to picture this should help. So that means that if it has a maximum, it has a maximum, that means it keeps going down forever, doesn't it? Yeah. So it keeps going down forever, but it has a maximum, but it has no minimum. Okay. And so since it is a parabola, and this is going to be some type of real world examples, I'm going to have to think, all right, what is my domain? What is the x values of my parabola of where it can exist? A lot of times we're dealing with measurements. Can I have a negative measurement? No, can't have a negative measurement. Okay. We're talking about number of people that we could fit on a plane. Okay. As we maximize that, am I going to have any negative people? No, they're going to get stopped by TSA and get, you know, body cavity search. See what I did there? See what I did? Negative people thrown on a plane. No. That man's not real. Oh, dang it. Okay. Anyway. I tried. Do you know what? I tried so hard. I worked on that joke all morning. A farmer with 4,000 meters of fencing wants to enclose a rectangular plot that borders a straight river. The farmer does not fence the side along the river. What is the largest rectangular area that can be enclosed? Area. Okay. So I need to start talking about what I'm trying to do. I'm going to maximize the area. And for that, it's how do I find the area anyway? Say it again. 
base times height, but in this case, it's going to be x times y. x times y, right? Okay. But now, I'm working with another thing. I'm working with the perimeter. Okay. Because I have fencing, I want to put around that. So now I have to deal with perimeter. Now the perimeter, the perimeter of this is going to be what? 2x plus y. There we go. So 2x plus y. And then do I know what the perimeter is supposed to be? Four thousand meters. There we go. There we go. Okay. It, the perimeter is supposed to be four thousand meters. So let's put that in there. So four thousand is equal to two x plus one. Now, the problem with this is I'm dealing with x's and y's. I have two different equations that I'm trying to put together. So what I need to do is I need to only have one variable. I need to make it a what variable by substituting. So the easiest thing I could do is actually solve for y. If I solve for y in my perimeter formula, I would have y is equal to 4,000 minus 2x. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Just by moving it over. Okay. So now let's go ahead and plug that in from our y over here. So if I plug that into my y, I get a is equal to x times 4,000 minus 2x. Let's do a little distribution here. So I should get A is equal to 4,000 X minus 2 X squared. And then from there, we can go ahead and let's do my derivative. But I'm going to go to another page because I hate trying to cram everything in the bottom. Now, this problem is asking me to optimize the area, right? Optimizing the area means I need to take the derivative of the area and set it equal to zero. If I was optimizing the perimeter, I would take the derivative of the perimeter and set that equal to, does that make sense? So as you read the question, you need to look at what is it we're trying to find and how we're going to get there. So let's go ahead and take the derivative. So my derivative of this is actually going to be a dA, and I'm taking the derivative of x. So that's going to be 4,000 minus 4x. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, so that's my derivative, and I know I need to set my derivative equal to zero. So if I go zero equals 4,000 minus 
4x, put the 4x to the other side, get 4x equals 4,000. I get, divided by 4, x is 1,000. And now I'm going to plug that x in. So if x is 1,000, I'm going to plug that into my perimeter. So if my perimeter So I should get that my 4,000 equals 2 times 1,000 is 2,000 plus y. I should get that y is equal to 2,000. That makes sense or is that kind of nonsense or did I lose everyone? So this one here is 2,000, this one is 1,000, if I add up all my fence I get 4,000, right? Yeah. And my maximum area, my maximum area is, I plug those in. And I believe these are meters, aren't they? Yeah, it's a meter. So there is my maximum area. Now let's look at it graphically. So let's take out your calculator, look at it graphically. And just go with that area formula that I have, which is 4,000 x minus 4x here. Or the area? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, minus 2x squared. And I'm going to change my window. Start with zero because I don't want negative area. And I'm going to go to 2000 because I already know what the answer is supposed to be. So Y minimum would be zero. Y maximum, again, I already know what the answer is going to be. It's going to be 2 million. So with that graph, being able to graph that, and I'm trying to calculate the maximum. So I want to, I just did that mathematically. Now we can look at it graphically of where my, or my value of my maximum is going to be. So I could actually just turn on my trace, menu, trace graph, or analyze graph. 
analyze graph might be a little bit easier for you. If you go analyze graph, let's do maximum. Go here and here. Gives me the coordinate. It says my my x value is 1,000, and my y value in this case is going to be the total area is going to be 2 million meters squared. Does that make sense? Yes, hopefully. Yes. Okay, so we could actually do them both ways. But mathematically, we calculate where our derivative is equal to zero because sometimes it's not very easy and cut and dry to be able to find it. But being able to graph it, you can find it also. So we can actually do it using both ways. All right, here's another one. Maximizing volume. From each corner of a square piece of sheet metal, 18 centimeters on each side, remove a small square and turn it up so that the edges form a open box. What are the dimensions of the box with the largest volume? Okay, so volume. I know that it's going to be length times width times height. Yes, volume, okay, it's a box, it has volume. It has a piece of sheet metal. And it's 18 centimeters on each side. Yes, so far? Yeah, Denny, you following? Okay. So what we're doing here is we are going to cut out a square on each corner and by doing that, since I'm going to cut that out, I could actually fold along this line, this line, and fold these pieces up and it's now going to be an open box. So by folding that up, I'm now going to have an open box, a box with no lid. Yeah, like one of those. But I don't know what it's going to be. So I'm trying to maximize the volume, right? Okay, so to get that, I know that I need to figure out what this value is right here. I'm going to say that that's going to be an X. And from here all the way here, this square over here is going to be an X by X, right? This one over here is also going to be an X by X. But if this is the length right here, the length that I'm going to have for my volume is going to be, what do you think it's going to be? It's not going to be 18. Anyone want to take a guess at it? It's not going to be 18. Why is it not 18? pieces yeah. that I have to cut off, right? Yeah. Would you like two X? No. Say the whole thing. 18 is an X, right? Perfect. That's it. So for the length on this one, I'm going to have 18 Okay. Now going this way, it's doing the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's doing the same thing going this way. So the width is going to be very good. So it's going to be 18 minus 2x. And what do you think the height of this is going to be? 
going to be x because that's the piece that I'm holding up, right? That's the piece that I'm holding up. So I'm going to have x right there. And that's representing my h. That's the height. Uh, we'll distribute the whole thing. It's going to be a cube. Okay, just by drawing this out, the question started out as kind of complicated. They're like, what? You will have one of these, like almost exactly the same on your homework. So you're going to have to try and draw it out to be able to do this. All right, so we need to take the derivative because I'm trying to maximize the volume, right? So I'm taking the derivative of the volume and setting that equal to zero. All right, so what are we going to get here? Uh, 18 times 18, what's that, like 256, 256, uh, uh, that's uh, going to be 3672 minus 72x, and that's going to be plus 4x squared, all times x. So as I distribute that back, I'm going to have 256x minus 72x squared plus 4x cubed is my volume. Did my math voodoo trip you guys up? Hopefully not too bad. Now, let's take the derivative. So I'm taking the derivative of the volume in terms of x. 256 minus 144x plus 12x squared. Can I do any factoring? What can I take out? I can? I know you can take out 2x I should be able to take out 12 because the factors of 18 is 6 and 3. Is that 286 or 256? 256. My pen's. Weird. What's 256 divided by 12? 64 over 30. Ooh, that one doesn't work out then. Oh, 2 or 4. I uh, should at least take out 6 then. What's 18 times 18? Is that 256? 324, that's why. Oh my god, that's not working right. Okay, so it is 324. So thank you for that. I messed up my math. So good job with the calculator there. 324? Yeah. Now you should be. Yeah, now I can now I can take out a 12. So if I factor out a 12, that it's gonna be what? Minus 12 x plus, so I'll put the square there, plus 
X squared. Yep. And since this is my derivative, and I'm going to set it equal to zero, uh, let me see, what's that going to give me if I factor it? So that 27 is 3 and 9, negative 3, negative 9. So x minus 3, x minus 9. So if I'm solving for x and I got a 12 up front, what's that 12 going to do? It's going to be zero, right? There's no variable there. Yeah. And so I'm going to have two different answers. I'm going to have an answer where x equals a positive 3 and an x equals a positive 9. Now let's talk about the domain of this problem. Go back to the picture. Okay, can someone tell me the problem with this? So both, uh, I have two different x values, right? Mm -hmm. So now that we need to talk about the domain of this problem. What, which one of these problems will not work? Nine. Why? Isn't it so well, we, nine times two is like 18, so like if both sides have nine, that's the point that we're looking at right there. That means that the domain of this, I cannot have 9. That means that I would cut 9 this way, and I would cut 9 this way. And so because of that, if I cut off 9, cut off 9, what would my height be? How much am I folding up? 0. H would be 0 my h would be 0 if I root 9. So because of that, the domain of this problem, I cannot use that one right there. Does that make sense, Mercruz? You gave me a dirty look there. Okay. So we can't use 9, so therefore it has to be 3. So, going back to my problem, Going back to my problem, if this is 3, so that means that this is a 3, this is a 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, in my volume, my height is going to be 3, Three. And but what's going to be the width of my, it would be like 12. Okay, because it would be 18 minus 3. Minus 3, right? Minus 2 times x. So that's going to be 6, yes. So I'm going to get 12, right? So my length is going to be 12. My width is 12. And my height is 3. What do we come up for a volume? Maximum volume is? I know it's 144 times 3, so. Uh, 232. Y'all have calculators in front of you. I know. I'm like, I was trying to do it in my head too. And 
my units. Oh, no, it's volume. Cubed, it's volume. Area square, volume's always cubed. Area square, volume's always cubed. Fourth dimension, yes. We're not dealing with it. All right, other than that, I'm going to leave off here. I'm going to let you guys try some of these problems for the optimizations. So I'm hoping this complicated, complicated topic isn't so bad. So, what do you think was the e was the best thing to solve this? Best thing to solve? Yeah, to make the the pro that made this problem easier. The picture. So, if there's not a picture, try to draw a picture to go along with it. That's one of the key things. So that's the reason why we start off the class with all right. You're thinking about parabola. You think about it's upside down, and we think about the derivative equals zero being my maximum. And by doing that, we could actually get all this information. Okay, so draw your stuff. All right, make sure you all like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification button and support my channel. Buy stuff on my merch store.